Let's, uh, let's talk uh, power in a quiet bomb. There's some tweets from Doc Nito, who, of course, has been a, uh, a guest uh, on our program. He's talked a lot about healthcare, but he says a quiet bomb state owns a power generating plant, 190 megawatt capacity, has a distribution license already with recent constitutional amendments, can go on to provide uninterrupted power to the whole state within the next four years. Single biz biggest task that must uh, be done. Uh, he also talks about the fact that they've got uh, a metering manufacturing company that has partnered with uh, a meter assets provider. You can pay for a meter and it'll be installed within 72 hours. And it just talks about giving kudos to the state leadership for having a presence in most of the electricity supply chain. Now there's some pushback from my analyst, Andrew Footy, who says the same state that hasn't been able to connect 30% of its households to power, nothing stopped the state from pushing Ibom Power to sign an off-take agreement with Portaco Disco. Aquaibom has a stake in the Portaco Disco, but appears it has a metering gap of 63%. Engineer Femi Olaoye, who of course is the Chief Operating Officer at Tasset Industries, joins us to talk about that. Uh, Engineer, good morning to you. Thanks for joining us. Good morning, Rosa. Thank what you, you what, You're great. Welcome. What do you make of this back and forth on Aquaibom? What, what, what's... Uh, well, um, what's your take? So, yeah, um, I mean, both statements are actually factual. Um, so, yes, Aquarium Home State has a com comparative advantage when you when you look at the fact that they have a um, dedicated gas pipeline from the Equo um, um, Gas and Oil Exploration um, Company um, that feeds into that IPP. So they have the advantage of consistent gas supply to that IPP. So it's very, e it's very easy, actually, for them to... Um, connect the dots, so to say. So between the um, distribution side and the generation side to find a way for them to be able to meter the consumers and um, ensure that the, uh, the generation side will get their money back. So um, the competitive advantage is there for them to be able to execute um, the uninterrupted, uninterrupted power supply um, agreement that they foresee. Um, so I think that, yes, they have the potential to be able to execute that and get it done as soon as possible. But it always comes back to the bottom line, which is that how can we ensure that the consumer is properly metered? Uh -huh. Because that's the bottom line of the whole, th the whole thing, the whole industry. How do we get our money back? We generate, we, we supply, but we are unable to get our money back, which is part of what we are seeing right now with um, the federal government and the discos uh, with MBET. And then, then not being able to get their um, monies back as um, as when as when and due. Yeah. Um, so uh, the problem is just the fundamentals. How do we sort out this money issue? And for me, it's, I think it's very, it's very easy. Um, we have to find a way to deliver meters to the consumers free, of, well, not necessarily free of charge, but at least free of charge upfront. Mm. So that they can then either pay it um, um, in an in instrumental basis uh -huh. um, down the line, yeah. uh, pay back for the meters, or find a way to be able to deliver meters to the consumers who have the money to pay for it. And once we can, once we're able to do that, I think that we'll be able to tie um, the financials, uh, the financial loose ends, so to say. Um, the the other portion of that is the issue of um, subsidies. Basically, being able to free up the market, allow the market dictate the prices. I mean, this government came on board talking about the fact that they were going to open up um, the system and ensure that everything is privatized or, I mean, <laughs> that everything will be deregulated and yeah. that everybody will be able to fix prices according to market uh, forces. But we, we have not seen that happen. Basically, we still have subsidies in the, in the industry and that is obviously causing problems. It always cascades into multiple problems down, this, um, down, down the line. So I think uh, for us to be able to solve these problems, we just need to get down to the basics tie the money to the investments, ensure that the, those who make the investments can get their money back. And I think we'll have... Um, Before you go, we'll, we'll, we'll just thank you for the breakdown on power. We talked a lot. You were, you, there's traffic and rain. Uh, there's, a, there's a tweet here. I really want to get, get through this tweet very quickly from, is it Millicent? There's a gentleman on, uh, on Twitter that put, showed this tweet. And there was, um, we're talking about infrastructure now. Yeah. Flood, yeah, there it is. Dividends of democracy, the Odo uh, ELRO bridge or Jota towards Maryland uh, after the rain. Um, with the rainy season coming up, what kind of infrastructure problems do you think Lagos is going to have? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Oh, well, I think I mean, we have get, the video. We have getting, just, getting just, here was, was, yeah, it was, it was an issue, right? Yeah, it was an issue already. Yeah. Um, but I think we always have to go back to maintenance is just the thing. Maintenance is the thing. These industries are built around maintenance. Yeah. You have multiple industries that are built around ensuring that the infrastructure is prepared for the rainy season. This is a this, bridge. This is, How does, yeah, I mean, it has a canal under it. How does a bridge get this, flooded? I mean, the, the, the drainages are blocked. As simple as that. The drainages are simply blocked. That's just what it is. 
And it, before the rainy season kicked off, we should have gone in there to remove these um, blockages, ensure that the drainages are open. And then when the rain, rains come, everything drains as, as it should. Is know? it a, see, look, I drive, I see bus conductors, and I don't want to put it all on them. Even people who are at least dress like they're learned, they toss things on the floor, chewing gum wrappers, ice cream cones. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, what, what do we do? Because, you know, do you find people? Do you how, how do we how do we, is it the, the I know in South yeah, Korea I mean, you can't in the, even yeah. in Kigali Rwanda if you yeah. if you throw a bit of something on the floor you'll be fine. Yeah, is that so? It? Yeah, it has to go. But I mean, it's just governance. It's governance. Yeah. It's simply governance. We just have to ensure that as a people we get ourselves sorted out to the point that we can sort out things like this. Fix. Um, 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 the ability to to manage trash, manage waste. I mean, look at trash everywhere. Yeah. I mean. <laughs> There's just a lot that we need to do in terms of governance. I mean, the same thing goes back to the electricity, electricity sector. Yeah. Trash in the system. Exactly. We need to be able to evacuate all that. Nice trash. metaphor yeah. there. Engineer Femi Olawoye, yeah. COO at Tosset Industries. Thank yeah. you so much for joining us. Appreciate you. your time. Yeah.